This is Aussie Mac Zone. We'll cover everything Apple, including Macs, iPhones, iPads, and more. All this from an Aussie perspective. Sit back, relax, and insert yourself into the zone. The Aussie Mac Zone. Hi, everybody. Welcome to show 342 Aussie Mac Zone. Zahn, how are you? Fantastic, Michael. How are you? Fantastic. 3.42. We're knocking them down. Yeah. Yeah. So our Aussie Apple ramblings this week. Now, <laughs> it's not one thing, it's another, isn't it? So, UK police arrest iconic criminals in biggest ever operation after encryption breakthrough. Yes. Uh, routers report. British police said on Thursday they had carried out their biggest operation ever, arresting iconic figures and smashing thousands of conspiracies, including murder plots and infiltrating a communication service used by criminals. The National Crime Agency, or NCA, said the cracking <clears throat> of the encryption used by IncoChat, IncoChat, yeah, IncoChat, Yep. which offered a secure mobile phone instant message service and was used by criminals to coordinate their activities had allowed detectives across the country to make almost 750 arrests. The agency said it almost, I'm oh, sorry, said it also meant a specialist team had been able to stop rival gangs carrying out kidnappings, executions successfully, uh, mitigating over 200 threats to life. Two months ago, French and Dutch, in Dutch investigators infiltrated the platform, which had 60,000 users worldwide and around 10,000 in the U uh, United Kingdom and shared the data via Europol, allowing the authorities to monitor criminals, messages, and movements. EncroChat, which has now been shut down, had advised its users to throw away their headsets on June 13 after realizing it had been compromised. Pardon me. However, British police have made 746 arrests, claimed 54 million pounds in criminal cash, seized 77 firearms, including assault rifles and submachine guns, and more uh, and two tons of drugs. And the <coughs> NAC said it added the entire network had been dismantled in the most significant operation of its kind. Other European law enforcement agencies have also used the information to target crime groups. Uh, information's in our links. Yep. Uh, if you want to read more, that's a really cool story. <laughs> <laughs> so basically they got something, they had something like WeChat or whatever. Yeah. That they could send messages to each other. Yep. And because uh, they were encrypted, once the encryption got, once they spent, you know, they obviously spent hours and hours, years and years trying to beat the encryption. Yep. Once they ticked it, then it was easy from there. Yeah. They got $54 million in cash. Yeah. A million pounds well, in cash. Fifty-four million Pound. uh, pounds. That, that, yeah. That's here. That's like what? A hundred and fifty million. Yeah, something, whatever it is. Like, yeah. Ridiculous amount of money. Yeah, and the the drugs and the firearms and yeah, it's like to stop rival bikey gangs would have been using yep. the same service yep. to work out how to shoot each other. Like that's yeah. that's how they would put it in Australia. You know what I mean? Like yeah, exactly. So I wonder how many Aussies have been caught up in it as well. Yeah. Now, Apple honours eight developers with its annual Apple Design Awards. Winners are recognised for outstanding app design, innovation, ingenuity and technical achievement. Apple last week named eight app and game developers receiving an Apple Design Award, each one selected for being thoughtful and creative. The Apple Design Award winners bring distinctive new ideas to life and demonstrate deep mastery of Apple technologies. 
The apps spring up from developers large and small in every part of the world and provide users with new ways of working, creating and playing. Every year, app and game developers demonstrate exceptional craftsmanship and we're honouring the best of the best, said Ron Okamoto, Apple's Vice President of Worldwide Developer Relations. Receiving an Apple Design Award is a special and laudable accomplishment. Past honorees have made some of the most noteworthy apps and games of all time. Through their vision, determination and exacting standards, the winning developers inspire not only their peers in the Apple developer community, but all of us at Apple too. The apps. Darkroom from Bergen Co. is a powerful photo and video editor whose interface is as beautiful as it is easy to use. Loom, which is triple O, L triple O M, developed by Iorama Studio, is an animation playground that takes inspiration from music creation tools. Sharper 3D from Sharper 3D ZRT is a powerful CAD app for iPad that has the potential to drastically transform the architectural and technical drawing workflow. Staffpad from Staffpad Limited brilliantly converts handwriting musical notation into digital sheet music. And more than 200 developers have been recognised with Apple Design Awards over the past 20 years. The recognition has been proven to be an accelerant for developers who are pioneering innovative designs with their individual apps and influencing tyre categories. Previous winners such as Pixelmator, it's an app I use, DJ, Complete Anatomy, Home Court, Florence and Crossy Road have set the standard in areas such as storytelling, interface design and use of Apple tools and technologies. And now the game winners, Zahn. You've yes. got the list of game winners there. I do. <laughs> oh, and where are we? Sorry. The first gaming story. Yeah. The game is up here. We are sorry. <laughs> <coughs> Apple Design Awards um, continued. Continued with um, Sonia Wildheart, Sayonara Wildheart, yeah. from developer Simago and publisher Anna Pruna Interactive, have been lauded for outstanding design since its launch. Sky Children of the Light from that game company has players flying across uh, yeah, flying across sweeping landscapes in a magical kingdom to help celestial beings find their way home to the heavens. The Song of Bloom from indie developer Philip Stroll Stolen Mayer yeah. is a unique game with a Non-linear tale packed with clever, uh, clever puzzles. Where cards fall from the developer, uh, the game band and publisher Snowman is a slice of life adventure game in which players build houses of cards to bring formative memories to life. Yeah. So that's really cool. Yeah. Some of those games you've already... The end of the game, Sonar, Wild Heart, we've looked at. Yeah. Uh, we've looked at, I don't know, if it, Children of the Light, maybe. Uh, but I know we've definitely looked at Sonar, Sonar, Wild Heart. Yeah. Now, apparently, that's also an al a musical album now, too. Yes. Yes, so, so. Yeah, it was released, so you can get the, the music with it. Um, I have it on uh, Apple Music. Yeah. Um, I'll check out Songs of Bloom. And where cards fall sounds really good as well. Mm -hmm. I played this week though, Beyond the Steel Sky. Now this is a remake, or well, not a remake, so it's a uh, sequel, or you call it to um, Steel Sky, I think it was mm -hmm. uh, in the nineties. Uh, this comic book based game is it's just such a fantastic challenge. 
Um, it's not an easy game to play. You really need to think outside the box. You've got to solve riddles, and they're not really riddles, but they, they give you clues, but then you've got to work everything out yourself to, to move one step forward. And if you get it wrong, you move about three steps back. And I played it for four hours today, <laughs> and I still haven't gotten through the front gates of the city that I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> it was incredible, but I really enjoyed the, the challenge. Um, I haven't played a game like this on... Uh, any of the Apple devices, they have been great um, games like SpongeBob and and, um, and things like that, which are awesome player games where you have fun and a laugh. This is this is a challenge, and it's got a great storyline. Um, you know, you're off trying to find um, a child that's been kidnapped from a village you're working in that brings you back to your hometown that you left many years ago. Um, you return to find everything has changed, and um, yeah, and it's as far as I've gone <laughs> <laughs> in four hours, uh, it's still a little g- glitchy, uh, which is fairly common, you know. It didn't really sort of interrupt gameplay, you just noticed it here and there, um, so it wasn't, it wasn't a letdown at all. It was just like, oh, okay, so it's a bit of a glitch. Look, I've played. A lot of online gaming and which glitches all the time, so it wasn't a big you know, thing for me. Yeah. Unless it literally stops me from gaming, it, it doesn't bother me, and this didn't. Um, it's, a, it's a really good adventure. You you have to work, you can't do this by yourself. Uh, you have to work with the avatars that the game has you know supplied. Uh, you need to ask the right questions. You need to figure out what the answers mean off your own back. Um, and then go from there. And you, you get given certain tools, but until you ask the right questions, you're not going to get the tools. <laughs> and so you might have to go back three or four times to the same person and ask different questions just to get the tool. Okay. You know? um, so, yeah, that was really enjoyable. Keeps your brain working. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You've got a little bit of lag there, by the way, Michael. Have I? Have I? Want to know. Yep. Um, and uh, it just seems to be hiding something a little more sinister. It seems quite friendly, you know. Uh, everyone seems to be like, oh, you know, you can, I, I can help you if you do this for me. But you, you, you're chasing and looking for a, a child that's been kidnapped. And the place you turn up to seems to be this, you know, utopian dream of a, a place after what seems like an apocalypse. Um, but there's also something a little sinister about it as well. Uh, I really enjoy that premise. <laughs> um, and so, again, I've been playing it for four hours and it only feels like I've just started the game. We um, have, obviously. Yeah, yeah, and so I'm really looking forward to more gameplay on this, and um, I will probably more than likely be returning and talking about this game again, because again, I, like I said, I've only just gotten to the front gates of where I'm at the start, and I want people to know about the game, because I'm having Excellent. so much fun with it. Excellent. So uh, that is uh, Beyond the Still Sky, for now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Entertainment. Yeah. So... Apple expands international slate with neo noir thriller Losing Alice. Yeah. Uh, Losing Alice is a neo noir psychological thriller from creator, <coughs> pardon me, writer and director Sagal Avon, and is set to join Apple's slate of sweeping international original series and a new co production deal. Losing Alice is a thrilling cinematic journey that uses flashbacks and flash forwards in a satisfyingly complex narrative that takes the viewer through the conscious and subconscious of its protagonist's mind. The series follows Alice, played by Ailet Zura, a 48-year-old female film director who feels irrelevant since raising her family. After a brief encounter on the train, she becomes obsessed with the 24-year-old screenwriter femme fatale Sophie, played by Lehigh Korniski, 
and eventually surrenders her moral integrity in order to achieve power, relevance and success. Through the prism of this female Faust, the series explores issues such as jealousy, guilt, fear of ageing and the complex relationships women have amongst themselves and losing Alice is a love letter for the still too rare female director. So yeah, Excellent. that's... Sounds fantastic. <laughs> I really like that sort of stuff. Uh, I like a thriller. And, yeah. Yeah, looking so, forward um, to that one when it comes yeah. out. Apple to premiere the feature film Greyhound, starring... Uh, th now, this if you have Apple television, you know... Uh, Apple TV, you know about this because they have been absolutely plastering it. Yeah. Um, whenever you watch something on there. Apple to premiere Greyhound starring Tom Hanks setting sail globally on July 10th. Um, yeah. It's a, it's a war movie. It's got boats. It's got stuff. It's got yeah. Tom Hanks. We talked about it. Yeah. Yeah, we have. Um, and like I said, if you have a day, if you have Apple TV, you've seen the ads for it. It looks awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom Hanks movies always do. He's lucky that way. And was this the film they were making here when he got COVID? No, I don't think so. No. Oh, okay. Well, there don't... we go. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, I think this was one. Hey, Venetia. Hey, David. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah. Um, now, also, yeah. Apple's little voice from Emmy Award winner J.J. Abrams, Granny winning Granny? songwriter. He's a Granny winner? <laughs> Grammy <laughs> singer songwriter Sarah Burrells and yeah. Jesse Nelson to be debut <coughs> part of me globally from Friday to July 10 again on Apple TV new half hour coming of age drama series as opposed to a single movie a love letter to the diverse musicality of New York follows Bess King a uniquely talented performer struggling to fulfill her dreams while navigating rejection, love, complicated family issues. This is a story about finding your authentic voice and the courage to use it. Awesome. So that's another one uh, starting Friday on Apple TV+. Plus. Excellent. Uh, now what else have we got? Oh, yeah. Things coming new. Yes. So new, new TVOS 14? Yep. Yep. So, which is the the new operating like we know that there, these are all things that are coming to public beta in July or August, um, and you know we'll go live in say September or October. Yeah. So you'll be able to run shortcuts, so like series shortcuts, but shortcuts to let's say Movie Time Netflix, and besides doing your lights and stuff, if that's how you got it set up. Yeah, and your TV is capable of working like this, so it'll actually launch Apple TV, which in turn will turn your TV on, or you can have your TV on and just it'll yeah. launch Apple TV, and yeah. it'll launch Netflix, or you could say Movie Time. Uh, the example that they give you on um, the new shortcuts on your, uh, in my case, the iPad fourteen. Yep. you can say all right choose netflix or disney plus and you can add your own in and what it does it says use the remote to wake up the apple tv yeah then it actually you can choose whether you want disney plus and you can add in others of your own so in yeah. my case it'll be like you can have disney plus netflix youtube yeah I've used apple tv my yeah yeah i view because it looks if you've got it running tv os 14 running on your tv it actually looks at the apps that are actually on your tv yeah and adds them to the available list yeah so yeah you can either have it and then just say run this or run that something that um a uh, little bit of a mention too is that only curtis would be uh excited about is um Fallout is yeah. getting a TV series uh, with uh, Amazon. 
and uh, we spoke about that today. Yeah, that looks, uh, it looks quite good. I can't wait to see more. <laughs> um, so that looks fun. Um, I'm really still enjoying uh, Central Park on Apple TV. Yeah. Um, I was looking for that, mate. That's one hassle with Apple TV is trying to find certain things because it's showing it's showing me everything. You know, it's showing me Netflix yeah, yeah. stuff, it's showing me Amazon stuff, it's showing me Apple yeah, TV yeah, it does, stuff. Yeah, it does, yeah. Even though I'm in the, in just in Apple TV, I only want to yeah. see. <laughs> no, it shows me. It shows me. I view Netflix. Everything I've watched. It shows me. Yeah. Oh, you can watch this if you want, or you know. You can watch but this I just thing. want to see the Apple. Sometimes I just want to see the Apple TV stuff. Yep. So I can find Central Perk and do it. You know. Yeah. So. Central yeah. Park. Yeah. Central Perk was Friends. Was Friends Cafe. Yeah. <laughs> Central Park. Yeah. yeah. Now, if your Apple TV remote isn't working. Find out which TV remote you have. So you've got the black one, with which is the Siri remote, or you've got the white or the silver one. Yep. Uh, make sure it's charged for at least 30 minutes using the lightning to USB cable or you know, yep. change the battery or depending which one you have. Yep. Stay within range of the Apple TV and move anything that might be blocking it. Uh, unplug your Apple TV. Wait at least six seconds. I say 10 seconds. They say six and then uh, plug it back in. If your remote still isn't working, uh, so you can press the menu or the or Apple TV app home on the remote to check if Apple TV is asleep. Try to pair your remote three inches away from your Apple TV, then press and hold the remote's menu and volume buttons for five seconds. That's what women's I had to do. Three inches or a woman's three inches? Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> I said men's three inches or women's three inches. <laughs> Yeah, well, we don't have to get up, so it's men's three inches. Um, <laughs> so then, <coughs> pardon me. You press and hold your remote's menu and volume up for five seconds and then place your remote on top of the TV if it are, uh, or Apple TV if it asks you. And and that's that's what I had to do. Oh, it happened to you as well? Yeah. Yeah, mine, mine was playing up earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, not to that extent, though. Uh, it just sort of it played up, and I was like, right, so I just shut everything down. Yeah. And um, yeah, started it all back up. I noticed that it stopped the volume and everything stopped working on mine. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I didn't know why, but I went in and I switched everything back to custom. Uh, I think one of the boys might have uh, been trying to use it and had gone in and moved stuff around, and yeah. now it all works again. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I shut everything down, like reset and, and restarted everything, and that seems to be working okay now. Yeah, so it was just one of those things. There, yeah. There's actually some more notes for for the other remotes in yeah. the show notes, of course. Yeah. Um, another one that's not in our show notes this week is Kat, my wife and I both been having similar issues where. The Apple Watch appears to lose the Bluetooth connection to the phones, and yeah. this has only happened since in the last updates. Yeah. So whether there's some Bluetooth thing going on in the update, and you'll you'll see you'll be you'll look at your watch and it'll say, "Oh, do you want to um, uh, have a Wi-Fi connection to your phone?" Yeah. And uh, you say no because anyway you don't need a wi-fi connection to your phone then you realize if you swipe up from the bottom it'll actually show you a little picture of the like a little red phone outline but mine's doing it right now actually at the top of the little screen it's got a little red but rectangle with a line through it which means that the bluetooth on on my phone isn't talking to the bluetooth on my watch sometimes i can just um Basically, I've got to turn the Bluetooth off on the on the phone, you know, count the count the three and turn it back on again, and it'll automatically connect. And it talks about the reason it does it is get too far away, but I think it must there must be some pulsing or something going on that it's missing since the updates because we've yeah, both yeah. got the same problem. Yeah. Not 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 environmental related because it happens when we're away f- and when we're at home. Yeah. 
it's little things like that. So, yeah, it's not like we've left it upstairs and then it'll, you know, we're 10 feet away and it starts to play up or anything. So that's just another issue if people are having. They should um, tell Apple. You can go in and send it like a send a bug report to Apple. So Now, our next one. Yes, so uh, UN report global e-waste reduction soared to beyond 53 million tonnes in 2019. Znet reports the equivalent to the weight of 350 cruise ships. The, I just was the last one. <laughs> uh, cruise, <laughs> of the Queen Mary 2. Yes. Uh, Znet reports the amount of e-waste that was produced globally in 2019 reached a record of 53.6 million tonnes. Uh, up 9.2 million tonnes in five years. According to uh, United Nations, the UN defines e-waste as any discarded product with a battery or plug uh, and features toxic and hazardous substances such as mercury that can um, pose severe risk to human and environmental health. On a per capita basis, however, Europe and Oceania where uh, we're on top of the chart with just over 16 kilos per capita. That's per person. That's right. And Oceania is only Australia, New yep. Zealand, and um, New Guinea. Yep. That's Oceania. So that's us. Yes. So we're carrying around 16, you know, yeah. Kilos. So 16 kilos of yeah, e-waste per person. That's right. In America, at around 13 kilos, Asia was on the lower end of the spectrum at 5.6 kilos per capita, while Africa was <coughs> only at 2.5. Now, I know there isn't as many of us as there is, you know, in the United States. So I'm guessing that's why it's, you know, so high. Um, but still, it's Horrible. That's right. Uh, yeah. Based on the numbers per capita, the report identifies that the average man, woman, and child discards <coughs> on average 7.3 kilos of e waste in 2019 on a per capita basis. Earlier this year, that can't be true because I never throw electronics away. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can show you all the boxes and boxes of it. <laughs> Earlier this year, Microsoft <laughs> announced. Ambitious plans to be carbon negative by 2030, with the company hoping to hoping that by 2050 it will have removed from the environment all the carbon that has been uh, emitted by its business directly by electronic consumption since it was founded in 1975. That's a pretty big call. It is. So it now says, back to you, Michael. Yes. So maybe, maybe this is why Apple is reportedly not giving us a charger or earpods in the next iPhone. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things. Um, yep. Now, this is a long term, this is long term scary. Yeah, because we've still got heaps of stuff that we've got to get rid of um, that hasn't, hasn't been um, worked out how to deal with yet, let alone... You know, all of, like well, you think we're getting all of the, the yes, they're a great places. idea, but we're getting all the bat yeah. car batteries. Yeah, there's a place to take them. Yep. Like, yeah. the, here in uh, where we are in Western Sydney, there's one just around a corner from us. Yeah. Right between the two of us. Yeah. In Dunedin. Yep. Yep. Um, we go there, I go there a couple of times. Yeah, so yeah. you can take your e-waste there, you can take your car batteries, you, know, you can take all that sort of motor oil, yeah. all Any that sort of stuff. Anything Apple you can take to Apple. Yep, that's old, right. Can... Old and broken, not working, yep. whatever you like. Yep, yep. Damage doesn't that. matter. Yep, that's um, right. As I said, this is long term scary. So please think about what you're doing. Yes. Even broken ear pods go yeah. to e, e waste, not just not just in your rubbish bin. Yeah. They they they're e waste. Think about yep. it. They got a plug on them. Yeah. Got coils of copper in them. So when yep. it's recycled, we get the copper back out of them. That's right. All that sort of stuff. So, yeah. Even broken earpods aren't general waste. They're e-waste. So please dispose of them properly. It's not that hard. Yep. It's not hard. 
Now, this Mac OS ransomware disguises itself as legitimate system tasks. The only way to protect yourself is to keep multiple backups of your files just in case. Should be doing that anyway? Absolutely. How often do we say that? Almost every episode. Yeah. Now, input warns us you're not alone if you think Apple products can't get viruses. And to be be fair, there are a lot more written for Windows-based operating systems, but that's simply because there are more Windows devices out there. That's right. Your Mac can indeed contract viruses. That's not quite an accurate statement. Uh, And your files are very much at risk if you do. This week, a group of security workers discovered a particularly nasty piece of ransomware aptly named osx.thiefquest that disguises itself as Mac OS and Google processors. The ransomware was originally called Evil Quest, a fitting name to be sure, but was later changed by its discoverers because they found out a real na- a real game by that name already existed. Of course. <laughs> According to security research, OSX.thiefquest has been spreading through downloads of pirated Mac OS apps. So in general, you should be staying away and avoiding pirated apps because that's that's where nearly all ransomware bad software apps. Oh, lots and lots of people. It's so stupid. So people that don't want to pay for yep. Microsoft right. Office or people that yep. don't want to pay whether well, there are really good open software Microsoft not Microsoft programs but Word Excel let alone Word and you know, Excel, you got numbers, pages, and Keynote on your Mac. But mm-hmm. you know, there are uh, other programs out there that are as good as Office, etc. So, um, or you know, the Adobe Creative Suite that people don't want to to pay monthly for or whatever. You can buy it, you can buy it outright every year. Like you can pay a fee every year for the, the Adobe. Stuff. Yeah, it's, you can, you can you pay can, for it monthly as well. But yeah, and you can, if you're so only using cheaper. it every month, if you're only using it one month in five, you can pay for yeah. a month and then not pay for five months and then pay That's for a right. month and not pay for five months. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you do think you've been infected, Malware Bytes app should be able to remove it from your system. So how does it work? The ransomware operates by pretending to be a legitimate patch file Included with pirated downloads of popular software like Little Snitch, a packet sniffer, and mixed in Key 8, a DJ software. Now that patch file worms its way into hard drive as part of the installation process because it asks, this is the difference between a virus and malicious software is, a virus, you don't need to put your username and password in. This is asking you to put your username and password in and let it in. So, um, and it, becomes part of the installation process. Once installed, the virus renames its processes to blend in with system tasks with names like Crash Reporter and Google Software Update, making it very difficult to pick out the ransomware from the pack. Then the ransomware starts encrypting random files on your computers, and researchers noted that virus messing with everything from dock setting files to system clock. Then if the virus is able to complete its processing, a ransom met, pardon me, asking for $50 in the next three days pops up. Some researchers noted that, <laughs> don't know what's going on or not, that the pop-up even sometimes comes along with a fun robotic voice reading the ransom message. <laughs> so yeah, please be aware. Don't use, don't use free, like, pirated software, basically. Anything else going down at your end, Zav? Uh, not that I can think of. No. Only, so, um, yeah, just gaming. Yeah. And we've talked about that, so, yeah. I apologise if I seem a little uh, unenthusiastic. <laughs> Start at the gym. It's horrible. <laughs> um, it's hardly held my... It's open, I'm so buggered. Jim who? That's right. <laughs> Harry, heavy man. Um, <laughs> uh, show promotion, show notes, link each week on show upload. The link being 
aussiemaxzone.com.au forward slash AMZ342. Yes. There you'll there see the last six th- weeks of show notes. Email us at Michael Orzan, that's me, <laughs> at aussiemaxzone.com.au. Yeah. Uh, you can look up Apple News for Aussie Max Zone. And then you just Spotify. don't hurt us. Yes, yeah, Spotify, Google, Wherever Google Podcasts. Wherever you get your podcasts from, we should be there. Please subscribe us. Please and tell like your us. friends. Please tell your friends. Yes. Thank you to all our supporters, you our listeners. Our most and important watchers. people. Yes. Thank you. Thank and the you. big sign-off. The big yes. sign-off. And remember, guys, Apple a day keeps the androids away. Thank you.